Welcome, everyone, to People on Dating. I'm your host, Will Morales. And for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, this podcast is about the ups and downs of dating and how to navigate through it. Today, my, my guest is Asha T. LeCount. She is a certified emotional and energetic intelligence facilitator and keynote speaker. She works with clients for, from self-worth all the way to the top 1% and high achievers. She has been an entrepreneur and consultant for over 15 years and is a certified trauma specialist as well as a few other healing modalities. Asha, thank you so much for being on People on Dating. How are you? I am so well, Will. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I appreciate you inviting me on. No, it's my pleasure. So tell me, Asha, how did you get here today? What was Asha's journey like to become an emotional and energetic, uh, energetic intelligence facilitator, keynote speaker? What was that journey like? Thank you for asking. Yeah, so I have a crazy story. <laughs> it's almost actually unbelievable. Um, and maybe a lot of your audience will resonate with the push and pull dynamics of dating and also marriage. Um, and so for me, I started working on my emotional healing um, probably about six years ago. Mm. And I, I ended up getting sick and I was sick with precancerous cells, oh, wow. um, po um, polyps uh, in my intestine. And I was, I was relatively healthy at the time. Well, I had like, I was going to the gym, I, but something was off. Like I couldn't quite uh, like, I, like just something felt off and, and, and somehow an energy healer came into my life and she said, you have an attachment. And so when we started working on my energy field, I fell into emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. So emotional and I'm really analytical and business driven, and I'm also very spiritual. And so when I started doing the emotional intelligence work, I started to open up more about like who I was and my awareness and my awareness. And through that, I started to really see a lot of my own behaviors, people pleasing, narcissism. Um, and in that, my husband and I ended up breaking apart. And when we broke apart, I saw everything. It was like, <gasps> and, um, yeah, that's sort of what launched me. I started to realize the detriment of pushing and pulling energy in relationship and trauma mm -hmm. bonding. Wow, that was so, wow. Um, you know, with uh, when you talk about you know, and today's topic is a good one. The empath is, is the narcissist, which I definitely want to talk more about. Yeah, and 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 for you, Asha, when you realize you know you you guys are, are breaking apart. And uh, um, was there, was that the aha moment when you realized that, hey, you know, I need to change certain things about me, um, you know, not take things uh, to heart, so to speak, that you wanted to become more free of, uh, free of, of maybe, like you said, people pleasing. Um, what was that journey like then when you realized, hey, you know what, I got to take care of myself now? Yeah, thanks for asking, Will. So there's um there's a lot, you know. I mean, I think in any relationship, there's there's always two people. Mm -hmm. Um, and when we're not prioritizing growth as a couple, um, you know, we've got we've got this really interesting thing. There's a lot of like that sort of uh, candy coated Disney vibe, but it it which does exist, but growth has to be at the forefront. And so when when you're describing sort of like how my relationship um, helped me to see that, what I what I realized and noticed is that energy in men and women are very different. So women will actually feel like the relationship's not going anywhere and like they want to like change, 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 change. And a man might just be like, what are you talking about? Like everything's totally normal. We're totally good. And then maybe the woman might feel the need to pull away. And the reason this is, is because well, it gets really primal um, about women and sort of going after like the leader of the pack, right. uh, but that's internal as well. And so a lot of us are dealing with traumas about our own wounding of our own inner masculine and feminine energies. So I was able to see this like really deeply when we got divorced, because what happened was I lost everything. I lost my job. I got in a car accident. I got attacked um, and my husband moved out. And it was all of this, it was like everything got stripped away, Will. It was like mm -hmm. a full-blown, they call it like, you know, the path of the wounded healer. Mm -hmm. And I had to experience that 
to understand how the energy works um, on our way back to balance, on our way back to being whole and sovereign and in alignment, and then choosing a partner from that place. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, I don't think a lot, of, especially on the guy side, sometimes we just don't see what's going on in front of us. Um, I hate to say it, you know, uh, we're blinded. You know, we just, most of us just have that, those blinders on and a woman can analyze what's going on. You know, they could become bored. Uh, they could see like, hey, where's the passion that, you know, it was a year ago. Now it's uh, uh, not there anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so for a man and your journey, you know, talking to people, um, is there something as a man that we could do about it? I mean, how do we become more aware? And we'll definitely get to the to the to the topic at hand. But this is a pretty interesting what you brought up. Yeah, yeah. Is this something that as men we're lacking? No, be I honest, actually, be honest. <laughs> I will. I will. Um, so one of the major areas that I work with women is feminine embodiment. And mm -hmm. in order to for a woman to feel really strong in her feminine embodiment and feel trusting and flowy and soft, she has to be really strong and confident. So what I find is actually kind of on the contrary. I believe men are really intuitive and really mm. direct and they have really strong sight but men represent truth and action and alignment and they're very simple you know a good example is i'll work with ceo men that are i'll work with them for eight weeks and we're kind of like done and then with a woman I'm, she'll be my client for the rest of her life <laughs> mm. so women are emotional by nature because women represent love and men represent truth so we have that same thing inside of ourselves. So a woman may go in a relationship and she's afraid to speak her truth to a man when the reality, because she's afraid he might yell or get mad. Um, but the reality is I find more often than not, it's just her own fears. And that actually when you, when you speak to a man in the truth, when you speak the truth to a man, they are actually really quite receptive. So I noticed that for me, and I'll use my lens, in my relationship, I was unable to speak my truth to my husband. And therefore I'd talk about him, you know, to my girlfriends or like, mm. he was always mean and all these other things, but actually, no, he was just quite masculine and quite in his own sovereignty. And I would try to like fight that. And so instead of facing it and get becoming softer, he, I ended up, I ended up leaving the relationship. You know, of course he has his own things as well. And there's always growth. We, we, we have to be growing, mm -hmm. but when, just to your point, I think that for my lens, when more women go into feminine embodied nature, mm -hmm. um, the date, dating becomes much easier. A lot of women right now aren't in that place. There are a lot of them are very anxious at the moment. And I see also too, um, that a lot of women have set standards so high that most men at at, at the millennial age can't yeah. meet it yet uh, unless you know as a man you get lucky you find opportunities very early and then by the time you're 30 you're a millionaire but um, I'm seeing uh, or I'm reading too where women are just asking you know that the guy be over six feet tall and have a six pack and have at least you know make a hundred thousand to 150 thousand a year some want more than that yeah. um are some men being priced out of the dating scene now, especially, you know, you're going after, like I said, if, if women are going after the leader of the pack, <clears throat> excuse me, um, how many leader of the leaders of the pack are there? It's, it's such a small percentage. I love that. I love what you you're know? sharing. So yeah. it seems that if women are just going after those type of guys, um, now those guys have the pick of the litter. Absolutely. And, and all of a sudden, Yes, go ahead. No, please go ahead. Go with your thoughts. Yeah, I, I love what you're sharing. One of the major things I stand by is I would never be with a man for money. I would only right. ever base it off of his frequency. Right. Um, because the truth is, is when a woman isn't worried about those things, those things begin to come naturally. Mm. So the growth happens. I, I The way you just described it, it's so one of the thing I work with men on is coming back into their presence and their personal power. So when a man is in his own sovereign relationship with himself and his own alignment, it's not an energy of like, 
screw women. I'm going to do it on my own. They're a pain in the ass. It's an energy of like, I trust that I'm in my own frequency and my own personal power. And when the right woman comes forward, I'm going to take my time and move slowly and let this relationship go slow. What happens is energetically, women grab onto men. They are attached by nature. Mm -hmm. And then after a little while, they get bored. And that's when things start. And the man, man doesn't really understand. Or simultaneously, a man sees like a really beautiful woman and he wants to attach onto her. Right. So those are wounding, right? Really what it needs to come in is the vibration of, I have my own aligned mission. I have my own aligned purpose. And then we come together in that really beautiful place. As I mentioned, I find men tend to be in that a little bit more. Now, when you're talking about what you're discussing in regards to like these certain these certain men and like these certain ability, I, I completely agree with you. There's there's a an element of division that's happening because now men are like men are kind of getting the short end of the stick. I know so many men that are supporting an ex-wife and her new boyfriend or living in an apartment and their kids are, you know, like it's a lot for men. They're kind of getting the short end of the stick. Like why would they want to put themselves out there um, if they're just going to get like done over? I just don't. So for me, it's all about the energy and it's about the personal power. It's a frequency. It's not money. It's, it's how you feel inside. There are plenty of wealthy men that do not have any clue about what's going on inside. If they yeah. did, then she wouldn't want to have sex with a pool boy. Right, right, right. It's right. about the energy. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah, if, yeah, yeah, if, yeah. if money did it, then, then there would be no, then, then the, that would be the, that would be it. But it's actually the energetics of the frequency that a man holds. Um, and to get there, you have to look at yourself and you have to really fall into your own presence and your own, your own wounding. I, I like what you said, a man's frequency, the energy of the man, uh, having a line purpose, uh, especially as a, as a man and a woman. Yeah. I, my God, I, I, I don't even want to get off this topic, but since we're talking about narcissism and things like that, uh, is that now gender defined? In other words, are more women becoming more narcissists because of, of, of what they're asking for or what they expect from a man to bring to the table? Um you know, because of what I've been reading and 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 listening on to other podcasts, it seems yeah. that women are they what they bring to the table. According to what some of these women are saying, is that they, oh, it's I'm a woman, so this is I'm I'm the table. Uh, I bring my beauty and youth to the table. That's enough. And for some yeah. men, they want more. They want maybe uh, a woman that's feminine or not masculine. Because I I know I don't like a masculine woman. I. I don't want to be dating myself or a buddy of mine. I want someone that uh, that's, like you said, aligned. I'm not asking to be submissive or anything like that. I, to me, those are bad words. I don't like those words, submissive, uh, compliant. Just, you know, just bring the feminine energy. That's what I'm asking. Help me. Let me help you. And 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 that's it. Um, so I know I, I went off on a tangent there, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so, no, not so, at all. I love so, what you're sharing. So do you see uh, women becoming the more of the narcissist? And in your opinion or, or in your journey, what does the empath is the narcissist mean? Yes. I know I went on, on, on everything. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I really enjoy listening to you. Well, like it, he's got a lot of insights. It's beautiful. Yeah. So when, when I say that about the empath and the narcissist, it's, First off, this is a really tough truth for people to hear because there's a lot of bad stuff going on on the planet, right? There are people, there are people that narcissistic recovery is a really difficult thing. People don't even have the tools or the understanding about energy to, to fix it. It's, it it means you can spend years in victim. You can spend Mm. years in defeat. Um, You can never recover, Right. And really, in my experience, I've I've experienced a lot of narcissistic abuse, and also was was responsible for a lot of narcissistic abuse. And what it looks like is actually looking at your partner that you're with and feeling like almost like disgust. <clears throat> and there are people that are definitely listening to this that can understand. Yeah. You're like, why am I with this person? I'm gonna tell you straight up. I've put posts on Facebook that are like. <laughs> If you if you were looking at your husband and you wish he was dead, take my next chorus. <laughs> <'Cause>, like <laughs> it's true. Like he'll die and then I don't have to be the bad guy. 
And like, people don't want to have that conversation. They're like, oh no, that's not true. I mean, look, they're just thoughts, but this is, this is real. This is how people are living their life. There's no intimacy in these relationships because people are afraid to like, look at themselves and they think that this is normal. So what I do find is most women are people pleasers and they are sort of keeping up with the Joneses. Mm. And that means that when they're doing that and they're on social media and they're on all of these things, they're outside of their relationship. So the man is a little more codependent. Look at Mm. me, come give me sex, come do this, do this, do this. And she's like avoidant. So when we're looking at it from the lens of narcissist and empath, which is like narcissism and codependency, yes, he tends to be more codependent and she tends to be more avoidant. And so what ends up happening though, in my case, is I saw all my avoidance and I went, oh no, I see myself, I'm coming back. But then my ex-husband said, ew, why would I want to be with somebody that loves me? And he will move this way. Wow. So sometimes if we've experienced that big heartbreak where it's like, oh my God, my entire heart's just been ripped out of my chest. The next relationship we get in, the person actually likes us and we find it disgusting. Right. So there's like a balancing that needs to happen in between those two energies. Wow. That was deep. I, I yeah. love that. That was deep. Um, <laughs> And, and and the thing is, Asha, I went through a similar um, situation with this woman I dated about three, wow, I can't believe it's going like three, four years. And yeah. she was emotionally unavailable. She wasn't, um, yeah. uh, she wasn't, uh, what's the, uh, a caressing type of woman, affectionate. I mean, which to me are all deal breakers. But I want to be honest with you, I stood because I was hoping that she would change. She would see me for who I am yeah. and it never happened. Um, and it wasn't a heartbreak for me. And I'm being honest there because slowly but surely I was able to pull away, but it took a while. I'm not going to lie. It definitely yeah, took a while. For sure. For sure. Um, but when I realized when I was trying to do certain things and she would pull away, I said, okay, you know, I slapped myself in the face, so to speak and say, wake up. Well, this ain't happening. This is not going to work. And I was able to walk away very easily. Wow. Um, but I think more of the bad things that we had together than the good and the good only lasted maybe a couple of months. Uh, And it wasn't like she was abusive or anything. It wasn't anything like that, but it was, like I said, she just wasn't uh, uh, unavailable in terms of physical, emotional, but I moved away. Um, I've had friends that uh, will call each other narcissists, would um yeah so you know where i'm going with this i do so when that happens you know and i'm seeing this from the outside i'm like jesus i i i dealt with a narcissist it was always about her and her how do i look today don't i look great in this dress do you like this dress what do you think oh i I cut my hair do you like the way my hair is so anyway um how is that dealt with then when you're dealing with a narcissist on the yeah. other side of that phone or the other side of that couch. <laughs> well, this this is like a great, great subject. So this is the this is the truth. You cannot get to enlightenment and love for the entire human race. This is a big, big lens we're going off of right now. Right. But that's my goal. My personal goal in this lifetime is for me to reach a full place of acceptance for every single human. Mm. Now, the thing is, is love has no conditions. That means that every time we label somebody a narcissist or put a judgment onto other people, we're saying that we, that person's making us uncomfortable. Mm. And we're putting a condition on that person's behavior. I find a lot of people get labeled narcissists when they're actually just choosing a different path. Narcissistic abuse is very real. You can get in what we call a trauma loop where the where the narcissist may like loop you back in and and tell you certain things and then gaslight you. There's a lot of behaviors that fall into this. But it, it always comes down to what's going on inside of will. Mm-hmm. So there's, like I said, there's like a masculine and feminine inside of ourselves. Right. So there's actually a feminine in the sky and a masculine in the sky. You can call them batteries. You can call them God. You can call them source. You can call them, you know, king and queen. Yeah. Doesn't matter. And then when you do, as you say, that you have one inside of you. Okay. So when you start doing this as a man, let's speak from the perspective of a man who might yeah. have a real severe heartbreak or feel as if she did him wrong. 
she's 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 a bitch she did me wrong blah 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 or ah oh, i forgive her but she was she was the worst right. instead you want to look at it from a lens of oh wow she was just a part of my movie so that i can find the own my own like queen in the sky and my own queen within like a muse mm. right like so i've got my own muse inside I've got this own beauty inside of myself. It's my own love and empathy. So I just see her as like a little piece of my play and I love her and her chaos. And I'm realizing that I need to find whatever I'm looking for in her inside of myself. So instead of reaching out to her, you kind of reach into your own like inner, you know, when I s describe this stuff, people are like, oh, that's wicked lame or like, you know, cheesy or, or, or um, you know, like, like gay or something. It's not that at all. Actually, right. most artists have an inner muse they have this yeah. inner relationship with the artistic side yeah and so it's that so when we see ourselves as a man reaching out for another woman or blaming another woman you really don't you want to just show her love by bringing it back into your own heart space and showing love for her because she can't see what she can't see right can't wow. see it. doesn't mean you have to have her in her life it's more of that empathy of knowing like i can't change her i see her and then I'm here in my own body and that's my own presence. And that's the real power. No emotional attachment. Yeah. And yeah. I, 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 that last sentence, no emotional attachment is amazing. I, I, that, yeah. That's right there. That's a, in the nutshell. Um, and for me, Asha, I, again, I was able to walk away. And then when I realized uh, the relationship, I, you know, and I said, and I said to myself, and I even told some of my other friends that if I see her on the street today, I would definitely say, hi, how are you? How's it going? How's your mother? How's your sister? Definitely be cordial, but definitely keep it moving. But yeah. I learned from that last relationship, especially because of the, uh, uh, the emotion, unemotional, uh, person that she was, the, um, you know, she wasn't, uh, uh, romantic because I guess she'd been through a lot of stuff. She told me she'd been through a lot of uh, issues with other men and all that. And I guess mm -hmm. I was, the, mm -hmm. you know, I was, she took it out on me, so to speak, by not being available, but I learned from it, you yes, know, yes. and I, and I took it and I made mental notes. Uh, I kept it in my mental Rolodex. Okay. This is what I need to do the next time and not to Love do. That. And so I learned from it. I don't blame her one mm -hmm. bit, I not at that. all. I blame myself yeah. because I saw it. I saw the red flags, but I just kept on keeping on hoping yeah. it would change. Yeah, and it that's didn't. it. That's it. So, yeah. So talk more about yeah. that. You know, when well, you I, finally, I love, yeah, I love how you just said, like you, not that you blame yourself, but you're taking responsibility. Absolutely. Because there's, that's all we can do. And, and really it's like, she can't see that. And so when we talked about, like, I personally, yes, I, I do feel that when women tend to carry these codes more, the codes, I call them, right? So they're like <laughs> a narcissistic codes and they can't yeah. really see it. It's not because women are bad. It's because we're being manipulated to think to be, we're almost like being brainwashed into being turned into men. You've got women yeah. out there talking about like being a boss bitch and that they don't need a man and that they need to be. That is the phrase yeah, of, of 2022, 20, 2023, yeah. boss babe, boss bitch. Yeah, I've been hearing yeah. that all the time now. Yeah. yeah so continue. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't mean to yeah, I, I don't carry that energy in my business <clears throat> and I'm, I, I have a, a million dollar business and it's because I believe that women are actually more successful in their feminine energy majority of the time. Doesn't mean you can't run a business. People, people, women may think right now that feminine energy is weak, but feminine energy is love. It's the strongest force on earth. It's dangerous how strong love is. And it's so damn strong that, that they're manipulating us into thinking that we're men. This is like... Mm -hmm. You know, and so my my role is just to help as many women get out of that hell in their head, because when a woman is in that, she is not comfortable. She can't are they trying speak. to compete with men? Sorry, I don't mean to cut cut you off. Uh, is it that they're trying to compete with men? And I'm not saying in in the workplace, but to show that hey, I can run this business like you're running your own business. Yeah. Um, I can run it this way. You know, I have that masculine energy and I could run it this way. Are they being told that maybe that's the way to get ahead? If, yes, I believe my... that's, yeah, okay. I believe, I believe I work in corporate. I have a, yeah. a company called Beyond EQ. I learn that most of the women that when we introduce feminine embodiment, the entire organization benefits. Men okay. naturally want to 
create more. They want to do more action because men's natural primal response is to create and to protect and to do action. Right. When a woman is able to receive that, you can actually watch men. They, I call myself like a business muse. You watch them start to actually begin really taking action around you. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. And so we we've been programmed maybe media has programmed us and feminism has <laughs> programmed us into thinking we have to do it all and it's really affecting right. everything i mean look at the house prices look at you know everything the energy is just different now people are afraid to date each other because they're so afraid that like a woman's going to break their heart cuz it's not enough or he's going to leave her cuz he's He's got his own thing going on. It's like a lot of trepidation. And so for me, it's about getting as strong as possible in your own truth and mm. then moving from that place of alignment. So I don't think it's women's fault. It's just because I'm, because women are more energy. They're more Love is boundless. It's like a yeah. lot of layers. They're more susceptible to manipulation. Women are mm. more susceptible to it. So if, we're, if we've got an entire system of media, et cetera, pushing this agenda for like boss bitch vibe and like you don't need a man, um, I just don't believe that to be true. Right. I think well, it's just it's just trying to create division between humans. And that's why yeah. I wrote the book Empath is a Narcissist. Yeah, no. And I and um and we'll definitely talk about the book in a, in a, in a minute or so. I did, and, and I, I was reading an article, um, I, I, shoot, I, I should have wrote down the guy's name. I, I think it was a couple where I see one in three men over the last year are either single or, or not having sex because of, of maybe a woman's, again, like we talked about earlier, Mm-hmm. What a woman is looking for in a man, where whether it's a monetary gain or, you know, physical height or other things. And so it, it's like you said, um, it seems like nobody wants to date each other anymore. Or I should say yeah. nobody, but yeah. you know, that percentage of men and women are just, or men are pulling out of the, the dating market because they're like, what's the point? Now I'm, I'm reading, Asha, that men are going overseas to what they call them passport bros now that's yeah. another new term oh, i just wow. heard is that right that's so what like i've been to, hearing yeah to find women that are not westernized yeah. exactly yeah. so i've been For hearing sure. that now passport sure. bros yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah absolutely so please um yeah well, no, li- having, having lived in indonesia and having lived in and <clears throat> traveled i've traveled all over asia there is an energy it's a really soft feminine energy and yeah. right now we're experiencing a lot of rupture in western culture i'm so glad you brought this up because after covid essentially made the whole planet stop like the whole planet was like go 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 westernized and then it actually stopped and that's why there's so much rupture happening right now because because people don't realize that trauma and momentum so that happened in 2022 it's now 2023 Right. right it's a creep effect you don't just turn around and become 500 pounds. You've worked for that. You've been eating, <laughs> you've been eating chips in front of Netflix for the last three years. Right, right. That's momentum growing in the opposite direction. People often think of momentum as only like compounding interest or like, you know, I'm going to the gym every day and now momentum is building. Well, it grows the opposite way. So Good point. When we ha- yeah. So when we had that in 2020, this is all energetics. When we had that in 2020, it's creeping up now. And that's why people are like, wait a minute. Like, and it's, it's, so I think it's a really pivotal time for business and yeah. also relationships. Those are the two areas I work in because business can't retain staff because right. the energy is off and people don't have purpose and they can't figure out what they're doing. So when you're talking about these passport bros, it makes sense because there's something about the Asian culture that's really soft and it's their balance. They pray every day to a God. They pray to multiple gods they yeah. honor um, tradition. They've got feminine energy for the arts. There's like a really beautiful energy that has really gotten lost in the last 30, 40 years in Western culture. And yeah. now, right now, in this moment in time, we're being asked to face it. So it's a good time if you're actually vibing on the high vibes. <laughs> <laughs> but I yeah, like that. I yeah. like that. <laughs> and it's funny because so, yeah. I, I remember I had a, a, a gentleman on a few months ago and uh, – he was saying that to find your next marriage-minded woman was in Ukraine. 
Uh, he has a, U uh, a YouTube channel dedicated to uh, to women in Ukraine, you know, between 20 and 40. Uh, and, and he was talking about that. And I had him on, uh, I think it was a few months ago. And it was amazing when I'm thinking, you know, I'll oh, find your next wife over in this state or that state. No, it yeah, was yeah. in Ukraine. So, um, so for you, Asha, what is the next thing? What is the next thing you're looking to do, you know, for your business and maybe yeah. personal growth for, for, Thank you know, you, when yeah. you talk to other people, what do you guys, what are you looking to do in the next three to six months? Mm, what, great question. What's Asha's crystal ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, my book is coming out and we've been getting a lot of traction around that so far. So it's yeah, exciting more about to, that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's called the empath is the narcissist and it's actually an alchemical book. It's designed to heal people. Um, so we go deep into the understanding of emotional and uh, intelligence and attachment theory. And there will be um, activations and different things, uh, graphs and stuff that people can start using to heal their mother wound and their father wound. Um, and really coming deep into like their own truth and their own soul's purpose so that they can live a beautiful, abundant life. Um, so that book is coming out. And so we're going to be doing a lot of uh, stage presence and just nice. moving into TED Talks and more podcasts. Um, and then we're building our our corporate business is really starting to kick off and that's called beyond EQ beyond emotional intelligence. And we do corporate training, consulting and recruitment. Mm -hmm. And I have the cool thing will about EQ emotional intelligence is it's measurable. So right. we have graphs that we measure. They're quantifiable. It's not just like mindset work where you're like, Oh, throw a dart into the air and hope for the best. No, the result is more money and staff retention. Like mm. those are the two major things that you want people wanting to work at your business. Right. Um, Jeff Bezos of the founder of Amazon. Yeah. He's said to be one of the most emotionally intelligent leaders in the world. He, he invests yeah. $1.5 billion a year in his team's training in emotional intelligence. Wow. And the reason is, is because when he was a kid, he, he actually grew up on a farm and he would sit for like six or seven hours out in the middle of the field. And that builds your intuition, that builds like your calmness, that builds your foresight, this builds mm. like your empathy, your emotions. This is the feminine energy of like being able to chill. And right. then he takes aligned action. So people will go, oh, Amazon, you know, he lucky him. And well, he grew 200% during COVID. And that's not wow. because he like had a stroke of luck. It's because he knew what was coming. He could see ahead. Yeah. And emotional intelligence gives you that power. When you're energetically vibe and high, you can't be manipulated. You see everything. So yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely looking forward for that book. Yeah. Your Empath is a Narcissist. Uh, yeah. Your corporate business is called Beyond EQ. Yeah. Definitely looking forward to knowing more about that. Thank you. And where can people find you if they want to get in contact? Yeah. First of all, I want to thank you so much for being on, on today's thank People. Thank you. I know what a great I, chat. I, I really had a great time with you. I could probably Me talk too. to you for another two, three hours. I know. Um, <laughs> I know. So if somebody wanted to get thank in contact you. with you, what's the best way? Yes, best way? thank you for asking. So will you be share you'll be sharing links on YouTube? Is that right? Of course. Stuff? Of okay, course, fantastic. Yes. So we'll also include um if you can just remind me at the end, I'm gonna I'd like to include a free abundance activation. So for 21 oh, cool. days, anybody who wants to listen to it, I do some really cool energetics around scarcity mindset, and yeah. people have huge results. I'm talking like five thousand dollar checks coming in the mail, raises the confidence to ask for a raise, um, twenty thousand dollars received. So lots of really cool stuff. So we'll give that to you, your uh, your audience for free. We oh, also have good. our Perfect. free, Thank you. yeah, and for those who are interested in the business side, there's going to be a link for www.beyondeqinternational. There's a free training on that, on empathy, and there's also a free ebook called Emotional Intelligence Creates Unicorns, How to Make the Fastest Amount of Money in Your Business During a Recession. And then we are also where you can find me on LinkedIn, Asha T. LeCount. And I'm also on Instagram at Asha underscore T underscore international. And I'm on Facebook as Asha T. So Facebook, I'm more like mermaid, fun, trauma, <laughs> love, feminine embodiment. And then on LinkedIn, it's much more the business vibes. Right. And we've got a really cool group that we're creating called Empire, which is all about building the kingdom and the queendom. Oh, I love that. I'll definitely put cool, that right? in the show notes. Yeah, and uh, before I let you go, uh, one last word I want to ask you, can a narcissist, uh, for lack of a better term, be cured yeah. or can they change their stripes? 1000%. Will most of them do it right now? Women more so than men, but when we have more people healing it, the more 
people will have to heal it. So it's almost like when you make the empath strong enough, mm. there's nowhere for the narcissism to go. Because remember, the person with the highest emotional intelligence cannot be manipulated. I so we that. need to get people stronger and stronger in their own sovereignty and see the red flags like you had said, Will. Like, so even though your your soul saw the red flags, Will, your soul also chose to have that experience. Yeah, exactly. And so it's kind of cool that you're able to take the gifts back so you can teach more people on how to see and know for the next time because yeah. the universe will keep giving you the same lesson over and over. So when, when you ask that question, the truth is, yes, I mean, I'm a living example and so are thousands of my clients. They, they face their ego. And if they can't face it, they'll, they'll go away. Right. And that's mm -hmm. totally cool too. No attachments. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I definitely agree there. Well, anyway, I, yep. I want to thank you so much. For yeah, being I know what people a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank I really, you so really much. appreciate it. No, no, it's my oh, pleasure. My gosh, thank you. Pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> great to meet you. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing back from you and I can't wait until the episode comes out. Thank you. No, again. me too. Your Sounds audience. good. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you.